but God is one that can take care of all of them. Everything that mm. we all have our different issues and needs from God, but he can just speak a word and still mm. take care of all of our circumstances by just raising a hand, by speaking a word. He can do it. God is a God that can do all things but fail. So we're thankful to him for what he is doing right now. Hallelujah. Bless his name. We are thankful Hallelujah. to each and everyone once again for joining in tonight. We have been uh, studying or going through a uh, session uh, within the uh, uh, Living a Good Life. And we had touched on trying, looking for words to say, breaking out of the, the death trap, the debt trap, the debt trap, the old debt, the old nasty debt, being in debt. And we talked about it last week and we didn't finish. So we're going to try to close out on it tonight. <clears throat> Uh, but uh, we'll let the Lord lead and guide us on that. But getting out of debt, that's a it's a trap. It's a trap. The, the enemy tries to set us up, but we are not ignorant of his devices. God has given us principles. And uh, Solomon writes about those in the book of Proverbs and shares with us this good life that we can live if we follow the principles that he has set. Um, here we, uh, where we left off last week um, when we were look, talking about the the danger signs things that we um, would uh, I think there were six uh, six danger signs and I think I'm going to get past number one or two so we'll we'll look at go back real quick and look at <clears throat> go through these we can go through these slides here we've been six danger signs. And we talked about living on credit and paying cash, and we know what that animal does, uh, what happens to us then when we go out and purchase things with credit. Some things that we know we could pay with cash, and we try to keep it in our pockets, and then we'll blow the money that's in our pocket. But we get to a point where if you start depending on cash to take you through, I mean, credit to keep take you through, you're going to find yourself in a trap. You're going to find yourself uh really destroying your own self because of it'll multiply and them or double and double and double and the 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 sin that we have or the ill that we have is that we don't pay pay it off monthly we'll pay the minimum payment it was ironic that uh yesterday um my grandson came to me and, and asked me a question that he had from from school about uh i think the question was um what is the worst and best college credit card, a credit card for college students. <clears throat> well, it did none good, but um, I guess that was one that they had presented. I don't know what class it was, but he asked me some questions about it, and, and I shared with him and showed him the good, the bad, and the ugly in regards to credit card. And if you had to select one, um, what some of the things that you should look for uh, when you're uh, entertaining uh, credit. Um, many times we need a credit card to even establish our credit. They give us, they have so many different setups today where you can either put money in a savings account or in an account with the bank and they'll give you the credit limit based upon what your savings account is, meaning you're really just borrowing your own money. But what does does is help you establish your credit because you're going and paying it back. So. The money that you have, you have $500 in your savings account, they'll give you a $500 limit. Now, you can't take the $500 in your savings out and have a $500 balance on your credit card. But that's not the way it's set up. But you could make monthly payments on the credit card, establish yourself, establish your name, and show that you have a willingness and ability to pay. And it improves your credit score. We didn't really talk too much about credit scores. I told you the high was 830 and it goes down in the fours and the fives, hundreds, and those are not good numbers. Didn't really talk to you too much about how you can improve your credit either, but there are some little tricks into how to improve your credit. There are agencies out there that think they can do it, but you can do it yourself. All you have to do is you know, uh, make, your, make, make your monthly payments and uh, not abuse your credit. Because one of the things that they look for with your credit score is they look to see how much you owe out through the credit card. So if you had a credit card with a $1,000, $2,000, $15,000 limit, whatever it is, 
And if you're at your limit, that's not a good thing. It's not as bad as it could be, but it's not a good thing. It affects your score. But if you make payments, that helps your score. So they look at your total debt and they look at how you pay your total debt. And then they look to see how much credit you still have outstanding. How much more debt can you go into? That's the risk. And that affects your, your credit score as well. So the important piece of it is be protective of your credit. It's your name. The credit score has so many useful uh, or is used in the industry in so many different ways that you really need to protect yourself. They're used in ways to help you in your insurance. If you ever want to wonder why your, your, your auto insurance rate is high, check your credit score out. Sometimes that's, a, that's an effect. Credit scores were really established way back for, for, for insurance purposes, number one. But then financial institutions began to use them uh, to because it's a character thing. If you are sloppy with your credit, auto, car, notes, credit cards, whatever, it's an indication of how you're going to handle your obligations with some new lender or a lender. So it, it, like I said, it was initially it was put out for insurances and things of that nature. They watched it, but then home um, uh, mortgage lenders began to look at the credit score and start basing their, their decisions on it as well. And it could uh, mean uh, the interest rate, it affects your interest rate. If you got low credit score, you can expect a high interest rate. So you don't want to be living on credit. You want to make sure that you pay. Uh, so one of the, the, the signs, the danger signs that you're uh, in debt or, or in danger of really affecting yourself uh, and you're, you're in that debt trap is you're living on credit instead of paying cash. Number two, um, the next slide was uh, was more than next slide. And the number two, keep going, We it was delaying payments or paying the minimum payment due. Uh, all, that's just a trap all by itself. So if you pay the minimum, it just makes sense. You, you know, you're not decreasing your balance. What I showed my, my grandson yesterday, if he borrowed $500 on his credit card, and let's say it, they, the interest rate was like 27%, and you paid a minimum payment, the calculator showed that he would end up paying 600 no it was a thousand dollars on the 500 something like that over at the minimum payment the minimum payment they just kind of calculate let's say normally is like four percent of what your balance is at four percent he wasn't paying most of it was going to interest so he got to look at it he borrowed this and he got to pay double doesn't make sense so may it paying the minimum payment you lose delaying a payment and paying the uh late fee you lose so all those things, those are red flags that, that tell you that you're in trouble and you need to step out of that. The next one, the next, and this is one where we didn't, I don't think we talked about this number three, was dealing with uh, when you um, are unable to save or to, to give to the church, to, to, to tithe. Many discussions about tithing. Some people sit there and say, it's not law. I'm not going into all that. I always looked at it as a principle that God put in place. If you look at Proverbs, that's what he talks a lot about, principles, principles, principles. The principle of tithing was before the law, and he showed how the blessings that come behind it for doing it. And if you you know get into an argument with someone, I, I just avoid it. I, it, it. It's a heart thing. That's what it's all about. If you're a giver, it's from the heart, and you got to really want to do it. You can find people that are prosperous uh, and don't tithe, and you sit there, they don't do Hey, worry about you, worry about yourself. But anytime you're unable to save and unable to do this, you're in a trap. There's a reason why you're not able to save some money. Saving and tithing, it's, it's a big thing. And I know I shared with you before, it was one of the things that I had. I just couldn't see writing that big check, but God blessed. And for years, having looked back, God has blessed us. So look at it, 10%. That's, look what God is saying. When you get the point where you are, you can't save for the future and you can't tithe, give 10% to God, he says you're in that debt, debt trap. God says if you refuse to tithe or you're unable to tithe, you are essentially using his money, my money, to pay your bills. And he says that's a serious thing. So we definitely want to make sure this is a part. These are characteristics of one when you say that you're in that debt trap. The fourth one 
deals with uh, unable to uh, slide down, unable to pay taxes. Some people have paid their federal taxes and things of that nature using the credit card. Do you know how dangerous that is? Because number one, when you use your credit card, it costs you more money to, to pay your taxes through that, that method. The, uh, Uncle Sam uh, puts a fee on you for that. And then you're going to be paying interest. Now, there is interest that's lower than what Uncle Sam would charge you. But you know, and I know, that if you put that two, three thousand, or whatever that payment on on your credit card, the likelihood of you paying it off in twelve months are next to none. I'm not saying the whole world is is, is paying monthly, and some people do use it for thirty days and things like that. That's good. You have to know yourself. There are going to be some slides that we sit, we'll sh show you, and it talks about you got to know you. You got to know how you handle your obligation. But once you uh, uh, are set up in using credit in a in a way that is detrimental to you you'll get in a trap you'll find it easier to use the credit instead of using the cash that's in your pocket so i want to stay out of that the number five now this is something that we probably all fall in number five was extravagant spending raise your hand if you do some extravagant spending come on Identify that, please. <laughs> what would you think it is? Look, it says, <laughs> it says it's very easy to begin to spend extravagantly by buying things that you don't really what need just because you have the money. But when you do, it hurts you. What is a lot of times we do what a word is called impulsive buying. We buy because we see it. We talked about Dr. Jones had it in his class, talking about we as a people, we want more. Sometimes we don't need the more, but we want more. The industry, the people around us are setting us up to fail. They build or make cars, make things, and they improve them to make you want to get the latest. Each time you do that, it costs you more. You don't really need it, maybe. But we do sometimes go overboard. I think I shared with one slide I was sharing once you telling you that when we go to the store, 23% of the time we buy more than what we went in the store to get. How many of us have done that? Amen. Go into the store. All I need is a carton of milk. Come out with bread and fruit and honey buns and bananas and honey buns and ice cream and honey buns. We just keep, y'all, y'all, we do, we keep going, keep going, going to the donuts in the back and shoppers have some big donuts, big old don donuts. We buy things that we, when you get to the, to the line, you have to say to yourself, I, I know I've told the, the, the uh, cashier, I said, you wouldn't believe what I just come in here for. She said, well, I said, just for that milk or something like that. And she said, well, you must've needed, no, you didn't need it. We just go overboard. And sometimes we buy more than something more of greater value or cost than what we actually need. So that's- well, don't uh, go that. to the store when you're hungry. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't know if I was hungry or not. I just wanted it. You go to the jewelry store, you sit there and look in the, in the mirror in the jewelry store, what do you do? Uh, that's right, y'all don't wear jewelry. But when I did, you look at, <laughs> you ladies, they, you know we want that big rock, that big ring. Sometimes we go overboard when we see it. We don't worry about the cost until we get the bill. And then we wonder. But that's that's when you do things and get go extravagant. Now, so there are people that can afford it. And I'm saying that you can't. I'm saying that you have to know yourself. You have to look at your parameters that you live in and stay in your box. Don't try to keep up with the Twillies. I use now. I changed this time, Sister Moran. I didn't put y'all out there. And I didn't say to John. Don't try to put up with everybody else. Do you and, and make sure that you can control your spending, your spending habits. So once you do, if you are using any forms of credit, it doesn't have to be a credit card. It could be an installment loan, whatever. Make sure you know how it's going to affect your uh, ability to repay and your uh, ability to be able to save. There was a um, on the news today. Um, they talked about retirement 
and they said that because of the inflation and all that we want right now, that it would take $1.2 million for us to have for retirement each, at age 64. One, you, got, you should have saved up $1.4 I think it was, or two. You get, that's, that's, I don't know which one it was. I know it was a million out there. If you're 64, if, that you to be safe for retirement. And they, I can't remember if they use $8,000 a month for income or whatever it was that you should be looking to, to live off of. But, and they said people don't, don't have it. Number one, people aren't saving. Saving has dropped tremendously because of inflation because of the stock market, all those things have affected us. So what we're talking about is we got to look at the signs. We have to look at things that are going on and these things uh, affect you later on. You get something on credit today, you don't know how it's going to affect you a year from now because you still have that balance. Things change. So it's telling you right that don't fall in that trap where you're going to lose out because you didn't protect yourself by not spending. Um, so in that it says, what is the most stupid purchase you have ever made? That was what we started off with. Anybody? What was, what was one of those crazy things you did? Talk. I can't remember. Uh-huh. You, okay, you got, you got it. It's in the closet. Okay. We don't want to confess. We don't want to say it. I, I, I've made some crazy purchases. I, I, I haven't shared it before. That Corvette was probably one of the craziest things I ever done because it was the most uncomfortable car. It was something that I probably wanted when I was younger. And I didn't even drive it. it we didn't like riding it over the high. It was just a, it was just a bad automobile as far as comfort. But I did it. Now, you know, you, 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 so we, we, we do things sometimes. We get caught up. And they're not something that you really want. That could have been in a couple categories. That could have been in my extravagant. It could have been um, impulsive buying because of something that I wanted. But we all we always have we all have those things that we we purchase and do things, and we really don't need to do it. We just want to, and it's sometimes because we want to try to keep up with others. Any questions? So if that's where we weren't last week, we went that. Um, went through those. The sixth one was looking to get rich. Now, this is the crazy one. Um, I know none of y'all are trying to look for uh, look tricks to find ways to get rich, but it happens. There are little things out there, and uh, especially in, in the world that we live in today, get rich quick. And many play the, the lotto or lottery. Um, and many of us, uh, probably uh, some of us have entered into i did the the bitcoin um and and look what happened to that that it was up when i joined or a year later and now with the economy it's it's down to where well, it's not even worth taking it out right now i, I think when i share with you guys a, a while back i paid a dollar per coin and it went up to eleven dollars per coin that was great it went higher than that i missed the missed the sale but it went up to 11 which was great um, I, th I think it's down to like six or seven now, um, which is still better than one dollar. But it, you know, to just to show show you that you get in on a whim, thinking it's going to go. The guy kind of forecast that it was going to go a hundred dollars a coin, um, and that sounds good because I would have made a lot of money. But maybe it will. I just leave it in there and see what happens. But I didn't invest my whole bucket into it. But looking for get rich quick things that's that's what i'm speaking of that we got to really watch that those those ideas that come up to try to uh entice you to to invest your money when you should be putting in something much more sounder i moved like give you i moved all my my ira uh, ira money out of the stock bucket because the market had blown up i put it in insurance that was low low risk and low return but for me I didn't care about the increase as much as I cared about the decrease. And if I had stayed in the market with the uh, stocks, it was going down. I saw once where it went down. And just to show you how a number, one month it went down like $73,000. I was in shock. Wow. That was a lot of money to lose. 
I watched it the next month. It was going down again. So I pulled it out and put it into an insurance, uh, which is, again, low, low return, but I'm st I stopped the bleeding. And that's what you have to kind of look at. And we'll talk a little bit about that, too, um, watching or uh, looking at your forecast yourself so that you don't find yourself in trouble. Any questions? Any comments? Just be disciplined, I guess. What's that word? Discipline. Mm, it's a good word. That's what that's what it's all about, uh, Sister Carolyn, is being disciplined. And, uh, you know, and again, I, I'm not saying that, uh, please don't ever take that you can't have credit because it's it, we need it in, in the economy, the world that we live in. Um, sometimes if you don't, many times, if you don't have credit, there are many things that you wouldn't be able to buy. Think about it. If you had no credit, you wouldn't get a house. See there? Your, your uh, apartment, that's hard to get when you don't have credit. They want co-signers. Co mm -hmm. and, and since we're talking credit, I will tell you that is probably co-signing something with someone is probably the worst thing you can do. If I'm they're not honest, though. Hey, I'm telling you, it is one of the worst things that you can do is co-sign. Because what you're doing, you're saying, I'm going to pay this. I'm going to pay this. And if they get into a bind, you're the collateral. you that car. They don't want the car. They want the money. So they come after you and the money. But it's one of the worst things that you can do is co-sign anything. And you better know the person got, you know, really well to do it. Now, and I'm even saying know them really well. I still say don't do it. For <laughs> real? I don't co-sign. I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest and recommend co-signing with anyone. I would give you the money if I had it to give. But okay. co-signing, it's 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 just bad business. It's, it, it, I'm talking to you from a credit perspective, right. from from someone that has worked in credit. We put people on there, and we end up have to go after that person that co-signed. And you know what they say when we go call them about making a payment on it? I didn't. That's not my money. My I co-signed that for. Well, what you think you were doing? You're saying that I'm gonna pay that if they don't pay it. So and then you saying, I don't have the money either. Well, the bank don't want to hear that. The credit, you, they don't want to hear that. That's why we put you on here, because the person that was trying to borrow wasn't credit worthy enough. And so if you were, you have to add that into your finances to say that you're willing to pay it and can always be on, on, the, on guard to know that any day, any month or any time you could get a phone call and, and, and need to make a payment. And if it's, if it's a car, just think of a car, add another car note to your pay structure already. That could knock you into a, a, a default rate way with your mortgage or whatever. So again, I, I say it is probably one of the worst things that you can do is co-sign for someone. And um, it's done, but it's, it's dropped considerably today as far as people doing it. And most a lot of lenders don't ask it. I'm not saying husband and wife. That's different. I'm talking about someone else that you may co-sign for. All right. Uh, again, any 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 questions? All right. Let's look at the next slide. That was six things that you look for to let you know that you're in a debt debt trap. Those things that we talked about. So uh, the object objective is to always try to be debt free. So how do you get there? Debt free. Commit to becoming debt free. That is extreme, especially with the way homes, the housing market is. It's 30 year mortgages. It's going to take me 30 years to be debt free. Well, there's some tricks to it. Tricks to do it. You pay more on, on, on your mortgage than, than the, uh, the contract or the, the promissory note states. $100 helps you to pay it off early, not drastically but it brings it back down it helps you over the, the length of time it won't be 30 30 years let's say it's 28 years but you say that ain't much well it does add up but then as you get older and then get into a retirement age i'm sure everybody that's retired can tell you every little bit helps when you're in um we're in an inflation market our monies the monies that we have on retirement is not as great or as much as it was when we were in the workforce. So uh, every penny, every dime, every nickel, everything helps. 
to make ends meet. So, uh, yeah, so debt free is what we should always be looking to try to do um, to be able to pay cash um, instead of uh, uh, extending ourselves in credit. But again, there's some some big ticket items that you're going to have to do cars, homes, but uh, things that you can uh, avoid. Uh, do it. Do it. Okay. Let's see. Next slide. So how do you get down? How do you get back into line, get in line? There's some things that you, you can do to, to help yourself. And here's, it says have a sale. So if you're in a debt trap, is there are things that you have? How many know that you probably got stuff that's just sitting there that can bring monies to you to help you get out of debt? Because we buy more than we, we need to. We have more stuff than we probably uh, uh, ever use, utilize. Um, and uh, if we sell it, it helps you to, to really get back in line if you use the money right once you get it, once you sell it. It owns your debt. You should always try to, to get down to zero debt on credit cards, number one, because that's one of the biggest um, uh, debts that, that we can control. Who's yawning? Uh, that we have. But we, we should try to get down to get to where we can don't have that. And also sometimes selling things to help you get through it. All right. Let's see. Is that uh, let's go to the next slide. Number five, that's number six. What was number five? Maybe I got my slides mixed up. So when you have your find yourself, I'll just speak to this. If you find yourself that you are in um in trouble, let's put it like that, with with credit cards or what have you. Uh, and even if you're not, you to you yourself need to set up a repayment plan. Um Don't don't uh, allow yourself to uh, try to do it haphazardly. You you have to control your debt. You have to control what you're doing, and when you're doing that, you find yourself in a better predicament. Because look at what it says: set up a payment plan. You'll never get out of debt accidentally. That makes sense. It has to be intentional. You have to plan it. You need to uh, sometimes a financial counselor. Deacon Jenkins was a finance, that's what he did. That was his profession, a financial counselor. He was a budget counselor. People came to him and he sat down and looked at their debt structure, walked them through uh, the, uh, a method of liquidating their debt. It's just like some of the companies that had out there, consumer credit counseling was one, but but having a, the credit union offered at the same time, and he worked for a credit union. But it, it's something that sometimes you need professional help to help you so that you can be committed to paying them, number one, and it can put you on that word that uh, Sister Carolyn, it gives you that discipline you need. Even if we look at, here's a scripture from Proverbs, don't go ahead with your plans without the advice of others. Now, that's a different translation, but that's what we have to, you have to look at, try to get this, to break it down, because when you read it in Proverbs, it doesn't spell it out like that, but that's that's what you're looking to do, to get professional help. When you overextend yourself, when I say overextend, not that you're not paying your bills, but you're not saving either. You're not putting anything up for yourself. And anytime that you can't put money for yourself, you're going to find yourself in a losing battle. Saving, like I stated earlier, is probably one of the hardest things for people to do today, to put 10% of your of your income into savings. Uh, that That's just a low point. But you have to really look at that, try to do it, putting ten percent at least up in your your account. Um, but it, it, it at the same time putting it up in there, you you got to leave it there. You remember years ago they used to have the the uh, the Christmas fund. People I had still a have mine. yes. <laughs> I get my check November first, <laughs> and you'd be happy to. 
Those the come Christmas. in handy. They do. They do. The Christmas fun. Well, just think if you had to set up an account for a longevity for something else, just like you did that, and not touch it, it you would find that it, the interest is, is, well, interest rates aren't the best for savings accounts. But it's still a discipline for you to know that you have something to fall back on. Here's a question for you. How much should you have in reserve in the day and time that we're living in that if something should happen that you have in your savings account to keep you going? They say have at least three, three to six months of your mortgage. Well, I don't think they say mortgage. I think they said your paycheck, isn't it? That could be your <laughs> <laughs> that could be. I know it's rounded. Well, at least have six months. I don't you. know about you. Should have at least three, six or uh, ninety days. Um, ninety three months of 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 savings that to be right. able to to live whatever you live off of. Right. To, to be able to continue. They say three to six months. Then right. Yeah, but it's not just more mortgage payment because so you got a mortgage. You pay your mortgage, but you can't pay your car note. Oh, okay. You pay your car note. You got to pay. So you can't eat. Right. So you got to have money that you live on. There, there's a uh, in in planning and setting up your uh, financial stability going forward. You have to do what businesses do at the same time. They set up a budget. I don't know how many people have a budget, but you need to look at getting one. Setting up a budget is probably the, but it takes discipline because yeah. you have to put those monies in those pockets. The budget itself is going to take care of those hard things, your car note, your your credit cards, your utilities. But is it going to take care of your savings? So I'm focusing on that too because many of us don't save, and that's when we go to the credit card because I don't have anything in savings. And I want to do this. I want to go to Disneyland. And I put it on that plastic. And I know when I get back from Disneyland, I don't have enough savings to pay for it. So I'm paying for my Disneyland trip for the next three, four years. But I want to go again next year. And I use my non-savings account, my credit card. And I do it, that, I do it again. And I know I'm speaking totally negative on how it goes. But I'm telling you, that's what many of us do. That's why I'm bringing these things to highlight. So you have to really stick. So continue to look for ways, set up a payment plan. Let's look at the next slide. Add no new debt. Wow. Don't add new debt as you're trying to pay off old debt. Look what it says. That's a revolving door. Most of us get into debt for one reason. We spend, what's that, more than we make. So we have to make a decision. I'm going to stop the merry-go-round now. You have to never get out of You, you want to get out of debt. You keep borrowing money. You're still going deeper and deeper. deeper. So these here's some points, some criteria, three criteria for using a credit card. You pay it off every month. You never use it to buy something that you can't afford. If you break either the first two rules, what are you supposed to do? Say that again. I, I'm, aren't you looking at the screen? You're not looking at the screen, then I say okay, I, I left see. it. I said if 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 you pay it off monthly, they say you should pay it off every month. You never use it to buy something that you can't afford. And if you break the first two rules what should you do cut that card up get rid of it get rid of it because you're losing you 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 you're in the trap and don't be like the fox and all those that get in the trap they end up biting their what the legs off to get free it's it's not healthy so don't add new debt but we'll you know it don't want to say we as a people, the United States or North America is one of the highest users of credit of, of many of the nations out there. The, the Asians, they don't use it this way. Um, the, uh, what was another? I think the United Kingdom is, is, is low. 
in, in their debt for that. But U.S. give us give them that, they give them that card and you you keep going. Uh, so I was I was surprised to hear uh, George's I mean Jameer's teacher uh, present this to him. So I didn't know they even still had college credit cards. But if you go online, you'll see what it, it is actually agencies or store uh, banks that have credit cards set up for college students. Yeah, and, that's who they give them to. And, and I don't understand that. Yeah, but they don't have no job. They that's, live a with trap. Their, that's a they, trap again. Yeah, they live with their parents. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 then at the end of the four years, they, they totally in debt. They made the minimum payment and, and they're in trouble. So it's it's just uh, like we were talking about it in Sunday school. It's a trap and we have to watch out for it. Next slide here. So here it is. I like this statement. It says, there's a hard attitude behind your debt problem. There's always a hard attitude behind a problem. The attitude is discontent. God helps us to be content with what we have to enjoy because you gave it to us. And not always we're looking for something. You know, you have to really think about it. But something new to give us a thrill. We're always looking for something. We have, We talked about it. We want more. Contentment is the greatest key for staying out of debt. And we have Hebrews 13 and 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. We have to get to that point. That's discipline. We can't get caught up uh, because we find ourselves in a trap. But if you're doing all the principles that God has placed, and I'm telling you, read if you haven't read Proverbs, do it. He speaks a lot about King James is not probably the one that puts it in plain terms, but switch over and look at the Amplified version of them, and it'll help you see some of the things. Because then one of the verses that I found that he talks about the uh, the ant. You ever heard that story about the ant? Well, it's not a story. The scripture how it talks about the ant. I think it's the sixth chapter of Proverbs. It talks about the ant and how the ant goes out and he, uh, during the summer, how he stores up food, how he stores up everything that he needs and he brings it back for the winter. That's what we have to understand. The ant uh, mentality. We have to save. We have to store up things for ourselves because it's going to rain one day and you have to be prepared for that without spending and spending if you just eat up all the food that you grow no storehouse at the end when it gets cold you're going to starve because someone's not going to share with you like you think they're not going to pass it on so it's best that you prepare yourself and if a little ant can bring that principle into place what about big old us being able to do the same thing so it's a heart, it's an attitude thing. Attitude means being able to put yourself in a position to show discipline and be content. And it's a big key and it helps you stay out of debt. Okay, our next slide. So when you have this plan, how are you gonna pay or do anything in your life? Share it with your creditors. Now, we, you know, one of the things that I found when I was actually lending is people would tell you all their business when they wanted to borrow. You get the application, y'all will put all your history down there. You tell about your mama, daddy, everybody, who's your neighbors. You give a whole lot of information. But when it's time to pay it back, you don't tell nobody. You don't call and say, I can't make it make the payment. And I'm not trying to give you an excuse or find a way to get out, but I'm just saying it, it seems to change when it's time to pay it back. We try to keep a lot of things in. We don't, we don't share everything. We don't share where we work. I've changed the job. We don't tell nobody nothing, but you have to be uh, open enough when, if you should get in debt and trying to get out that you want to share your plan, share what you're doing so that you don't have to file bankruptcy. 
that you can uh, if you can can afford but twenty five dollars a month on something, talk to them. One of the fearful things. I used to be a collector. I told you guys that once. People wouldn't tell you, tell you the truth. Whatever plan that you could get agreement with, stick with it, and it'll work for your betterment. It does. Proverbs six and seven, sixteen and seven. When a person's when when a person's way are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemy to be at peace with him. So the enemy is the creditor. But when you're doing things right, pleasing to the Lord, he'll make your enemy at peace with you. He will work things out for your good, but you got to be open about it. And this is kind of like telling you if, you, if you find yourself in the trap and can't get out, you still want to make sure you're making your name good. And you want to make payments because it, it affects your affects you later on. We don't Bankruptcy is something that you don't want to get into because bankruptcy follows you for seven years. And then a creditor can even renew that for another seven. So that's 14 years when you may not be able to purchase certain things. Now, there's, excuse me, some loopholes in that, but there, um, for the most part, unless you can prove that you were um, unable to pay because of medical reasons or something like that, they're going to hold to the seven years for you to reestablish your credit. And if that's harsh, that means somebody else has to be willing to take the risk and lend it to you. Or you're going to have to wait seven years so that your slate's clean. Okay, I think this last one, eight. What was I just said? Seven. Let's see what the next slide, eight. So whatever plan you have, it says stick to it. Getting out of debt is not easy. It takes discipline, Carolyn's word. It takes effort. It takes sacrifice. But these principles do work. They've worked for thousands of people, but you have to work with them. You have to ask God for strength to stick to it. Galatians 6 and 9. And, and let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't get discouraged and give up. And it's important that you kind of stick to the plan because it's going to help you out in the long run. Stick to it. Pay your bills, church people. Take care. Don't get yourself extended so that you are not able to make payments on your, your, your credit. Don't overexpend. Don't get set out for extravagant things. Live within your means. Take monies and put up for yourself. Save. Because even in uh, for, I, I don't know what generation I am in, but Generation Z, y'all going to have it a problem down the road too because things aren't going to be as the Social Security they're talking about hitting it. Um, retirement accounts I shared with you earlier, uh, people aren't, aren't doing the IRAs and what have you is the way they should. Some jobs don't have a retirement programs set up for you. So take care of yourself because it's going to come a time when well, you're going to get older and you're going to look back and say, I didn't prepare. And that's what you don't want. You don't want to be in a place or a position where you haven't prepared yourself for retirement. I think that might be my last. Well, that might be another slide here. In the middle of here, it says, here's some, I'm, I'm showing in the middle, it, it talked about a, a person with credit card, but here are some other interesting facts about North America consumer. 25 years ago, the average family saved 15% of their earnings. Today, the average family saves, this is what I was speaking of, nothing from their wages. Nine years ago, most consumers purchased a new car with 25% down. I don't remember that nine years ago. Today, new cars are purchased with just 7% down. That ain't even happening too. I don't know where they got that story because because people are going in with no money down on cars. Exactly. So uh, that shows you right there that uh, I don't know what community they were looking at, but they weren't looking at my community. And then mm -hmm. Pastor, they let you drive the car off the lot. Mm-hmm. And, and what? 
I mean, and then they, I've heard people say, well, they let them drive the car home and bring it back the next day. And so they just trap you, you know. Yeah, that's how they get off. Well, they know if you take it home, you're not going to bring it back. <laughs> it's a trap. Well, that's yeah, right. It's it is. It's, it's a game. Um, it, it, they've been doing that for years, um, especially if you had a trade in. I think the first, the first Corvette I looked at, I had a Camaro. The uh, Lusting Chevrolet he told me, he said, leave your car and take the Corvette and come back Monday and we'll finish the paperwork. Well, I said, no, I'm going to take my Camaro back home. I said, because you're going to sell my car and then I'm going to be stuck with this, this Corvette and I might, I want it, you know, so that, that's, yeah, it's a game. That's what they do. But um, the, the, the thing, these numbers are really off because like I said earlier, you can, you can go in with no money down and get a car. You can even go in with a car that you have a, a balance on it. They'll put it on top of your new car. So now and that's crazy, but they do it. And we sign the paper and we ride off. You rode off for over that Volkswagen that only was really $18,000. They add your old Volkswagen on there. You owe it still old 13. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> that's a we, trap right there. That's a trap but we do it. Look, if it says that last bullet point says $1 of every seven earned is spent on paying debt. Mm. Wow. That's crazy. There's some more here. Next slide. $1 of every five earned is spent on luxury items. Mm. The mink coats. One dollar of every four dollars earned is spent on everyday living expense. Fifty cents of every one dollar earned is spent, oh, wow, excuse me, spent on stuff we just want to have. Wow. Look what Luke says, King James. If therefore we have not been faithful in the unrighteousness, mammon, who will commit? to your tr trust with the true riches. So if you haven't been faithful with this stuff, right, who going to trust you with their riches? This is getting back to your credit score and your ability to pay, your character. It's not going to work. Protect your credit. Protect your name. And to do that is to be wise. Solomon wrote Proverbs. Solomon was a rich man. When you think of Solomon, you can think of people like uh, today's time, Gates, built all that money. Solomon had wisdom. So he writes this, Gates, he just had a whole lot of money. And I guess it's somewhat you can say he's got wisdom because he's these companies and what have you. But if we look at it, that we really have to make sure that we're protecting the assets that we have living within our means, not forgetting God, not forgetting ourselves, and God will bless us. So I'll leave it with that. Let's get out of debt. Let's save for tomorrow. Let's make ourselves just what God has called us to be in these last days. Those are some slides that he's showing right there that Many of us don't know our net worth. And this just shows you what, how do you determine your net worth. Look at your assets. Look at your debt. Subtract the two. And it shows you your net worth. $47,000 on that particular example. That's not a lot. Okay. I'll end it with that. Just uh, protect yourself. Stay vigilant. And do what's right. All right, let's uh, do the church announcements.